Hello, StarCraft fans! This is Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of Cheese Compilation! Game number one of our delicious cheese today will be between T, Clempey, and Dragon on Battle on the Boardwalk, the latter edition. Far as I know, these are all from the latest patch of StarCraft 2, 4.0.2. Should be exciting. In the top left-hand corner of Battle on the Boardwalk, we have the Red Zerg player. It is T, Clempey. Wondering why he didn't veto this map. Great question. A lot of people have this map vetoed. And in the top right-hand corner of the map, it is going to be the Blue Terran player, Dragon, from Never Res. All right, so a TVZ edition of Battle on the Boardwalk. Very special thanks to my screeners, Jonathan, Logan, and Squeaks, for giving their time this last weekend to screen all the stuff that I got. If you'd like to have a cheesy game of yours cast in the cheese compilation of Falcon Paladin, send me your cheesy replay, whether you got cheesed or did the cheesing, or if there's cheese involved in any way, Winning or losing, send it to me, if it's really great, to falconpaladin at gmail.com with the subject of cheese. I will send every single one that I get to my screeners. Sometimes one, sometimes two, sometimes three. Like this week, get a lot of feedback. And then the best ones are chosen. Alright, I can tell you two of the three chose this one. One of them being Jonathan. And I'm pretty sure the other one was, um... Squeaks. I'm going to say it was Squeaks. I really should have written more of this down. But anyway, two out of three here did like this one. So if you say this cheese is gross and dumb, it's not my fault. It's theirs. It's a double gas from Dragon, which seems like he's probably going to be the cheeser here. It's very, very normal stuff here from T. Clempe, which I keep wanting to mispronounce. It's very weird to go to Clempe. Ooh, that actually sounds better. T. Clempe. T. Clempe has a hatchery up. He's got a second hatchery up. He's got a spawning pool and an extractor. He is drone scouting, which I enjoy very much. And oh, there's not a hole there. Good walling by Dragon. We saw a game ruined. Because this wasn't walled off properly by a Protoss player against a Zerg player. So good job, Dragon, making sure to get this wall correct. It's kind of a weird, weird space to wall off. But he's got a factory coming in, and he saw the lack of expansion. De, de, Clem de Clempe. Man, that is hard to say. Oh, he sees the cheese. He's getting spine crawlers up at the front. I like this. The reaction from our Zerg player seems very top-notch. Working on speed for his Zerglings. He's still making drones. Might be... I mean, I don't know if you want to keep making drones at this point, but I guess he is two down to his opponent, and he's not fully saturated at his main yet, let alone his natural. I would love to see more scouting, though. I'd love to see another drone pop up here. Love to see this Overlord move on in. Hey, you've got .9 move speed, dude. Go. And he is. Oh, he heard me. Checking on in to see if there's an expansion first. There's still not an expansion, which tells you crazy things are happening. Hellions on the way from the Dragon. Getting a barracks with a tech lab on it, and a starport, too, likely going to be... Actually, does he... What's he working on here? So just a Hellion, Hellion opener with these dudes. We'll see what they do here on Battle of the Boardwalk. It looks like a short rush distance, but check this out. Whoop! Gonna zoom all the way north around these beach umbrellas. I don't know who on earth would vacation on those things. It's gotta be so dangerous to just hang out there, right? There's stuff exploding and bullets flying and flamethrowers roasting right next to you. It's bad. It's real bad. Oh, Ticlempe is getting a third base. All right, so we got two spines up and said that's good. That's all we need is two spine crawlers. Oh, this is looking really dangerous. A raven. Oh, okay. All right, a new raven on the way here from Dragon. I'm a fan of this. And just continuing to make these hellions here. He doesn't have an armory, does he? No, he doesn't have an armory. Wait, that one? That's an armory. Okay, going to be some kind of a super crazy, super strong one base hellbat raven medivac push. Now... The Disabling Matrix, or whatever it's called on the Raven, can disable these guys. Psionic units. Okay? Psionic and mechanical units can be disabled. So I wonder if it's going to disable the Queens. This is a nice wall, though. Hellions have a really hard time getting through there. I guess they'd be forced to go through this mineral line, which would be pretty bad <laughs> for Ticlempe. Mm, we'll see what happens there. Got an evolution chamber up along this right side, too. This building placement is extremely interesting. Baneling Nest really just ticking up like crazy. Might be ready for this. I mean, the answer to Hellbats is going to be Banelings. Just because Hellbats are slow and Banelings are fast. Well, faster anyway. Especially on Creep. And they can catch them very nicely. Okay, so these can turn into Hellbats. Got our Raven. Got a Medivac there, too. For the healing. So this looks like a pretty solid build. Four and a half minutes into this game. And it's time to go from the Dragon. And by that, I mean let's move. Let's move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. 
creep spread looking okay for a Zerg player is connecting all three of his bases. It's three bases to one, so this is a good definition of cheese. If Dragon doesn't win with this attack, he is in a heck amount of trouble. Just large amounts of trouble here, so he's got to make this thing happen. He's got Blue Flame on the way, too. A Blue Flame five-minute Hellbat push. I mean, I think it's going to still be five minutes by the time that Infernal Pre-Igniter finishes here. Lings and Banelings on the way from Teclempe. Recognizing the attack is on the way. Got good Overlord spread. Got good Creep spread spread. To see exactly when this is coming. He's got those Banelings up. He really needs the Banelings to make some solid connections here. And here we go. Clearing out Creep Tumors thanks to the Raven. The Banelings are there. And they're trying to uh, trying to finish before they get roasted down. Two or three of them oop, do get roasted down. Banelings are ready to go, though. Spinecrawlers, Banelings getting some nice hits. Spinecrawlers getting some more solid shots off here. Oh, Repair Drone being used. Repair Drone and not even really turning these guys into Hellbats at all, strangely enough. All right, so the Queen's stabbing away at what they can. The Raven does end up going down here. Ling's getting a full surround on the Blue Flame Hellions. The repair and the healing going on at the same time. Look at these guys survive. What? That was amazing. Ten kills on that one Hellbat. Another ten kills on that Hellbat. Stay in the range of the repair drone, though. Does it really matter? Wow. That was amazing. Other spine crawler going down. Single Queen is remaining. Ling's trying to deal with this, but man, Blue Flame Hellbats against just a scattering handful of Zerglings is not very good. I guess one of the Hellbats does go down, just desperately trying to make more and more of these Lings to try to win this thing. Is actually Teclempe going to pull this thing off? Oh, got the SCV Repair too. So the SCV Repair, the Repair Drone, and the Healing from the Medivac all healing these dudes. Hellbats and Hellions in an attempt to make this thing work against a pretty good Zerg player, I would say. Can he do this? Look at this Hellbat. 13 kills being repaired. Finally does end up going down. The Blue Flame Hellions going back to the Repair Drone to get healed up. And it's 20 to 22 total Harvesters continuing to make Zerglings, continuing to make Spines, as well as Teclempe. And still just one basing it here is Dragon. He's got another big swarm of Hellions trying to match on up. Ling's just pouring out. He really should be going for Roaches at this point, but Teclempe is in panic Zergling mode, which I've been many times myself as a Zerg player. At the diamond level, it doesn't go well for me when I get into this mode. As it seems to be going pretty poorly for Teclempe as well. A couple spines, but uh, against six Hellbats. There's the repair drone, and now they could just stand here and just get repaired. Actually, they don't get repaired when they're in Hellbat mode because they're biological and mechanical. Wait, do they? Well, they do! Oh, man! Hellbats get repaired on both reigns here to come play says one base yeah that was one base Baneling's trying to get in but nope not necessarily enough and that's it good to know good game says to Klempe, and that's it for game number one the Klempe is defeated dragons victorious with a very interesting build of hellbats with the blue flame and repair drones and medevacs and scvs for repairing Try heal was the name of this replay. My triple heal hellbat attack. I think your dude already left. Dragon, it's cool. Interesting. I like it. Hope you all enjoyed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he knew he'd get chosen. Creativity does have a pretty good chance of getting chosen for this thing. Ooh, we almost had smart servos done too. That would have been fun. That would have been really fun. Okay, that's game one. Let's come back with game number two in just a second. Cheese compilation will continue with a game between Bedarti and Blackrock. Here on Abyssal Reef, the ladder edition, in the top left-hand corner of the map, we have the Red Protoss player. His name is Bedarti. And in the bottom right-hand corner, it is going to be the Blue Protoss player, Blackrock, from Tau. I think that's what this is. That is, anyway. All right, so this replay was heavily recommended. Heavily recommended by Logan. He was the one who loved this so very, very much. He made special mention of it in the email he sent back to me with all of the ones that he'd chosen. So... Let's see how this works out. Usually the PvPs are cannon rushes. We have seen some interesting shield battery usage, though, from time to time. So maybe that's what this is. Blackrock is sneaking a probe out a long way that is not going to be scouted by a probe coming from the opposite direction. So this is what you want to do. If you don't want to have your workers seen, if you're up to some shenanigans, use the southerly or northerly path and make sure you don't get spotted right away. I mean, sure, you might get spotted by someone who's really good at scouting, but generally people don't do that. Right? Generally, they don't. I know that I don't. I work or scout, but I just go straight across the middle of the map and see what's going on inside the main base. That's all you got to do. 
Double gas from BlackRock. That's a big tell. That is a big tell. Although Bedarti's not making any gas at all. Is getting a forge and two gateways and sending a probe out himself. Holy shkamolies. All right, BlackRock is planning some kind of proxy tech here. But on the other hand, it looks like a two-gate zealot rush. Possibly with some cannon support for Bedarti. What is happening here? Hold on. Is that... Yeah, that's full screen. I don't know what that was. All right, here we go. Moving on in is Mr. Probe. I said, moving on in is Mr. Probe. There he goes. Sneaking up. <laughs> I'm just going to scout. I don't have anything crazy or untoward in mind. I just want to see what's going on inside your beautiful, beautiful base, Mr. Blackrock. Cybernetics core on the way from Blackrock. It might just be a proxy Stargate based on what we're seeing here. And there it goes. The sneaky pylon and two zealots already done back home for Badarti. Probe, maybe throwing another pylon up there just in case. I don't know if Blackrock's going to make anything is the problem right now. Are you going to make anything at home? No, he's going for a double proxy robo facility. Ooh. All right, very good. I'm excited about this. Dude, get a cannon up. Sneak around the outside. Don't get spotted. Don't get spotted. Don't get spotted. Don't get spotted. Doesn't get spotted. Cannon up. All right, Blackrock, you can't just sit inside. I understand all your attention is over here at these robo facilities. I totally get that. But this is going to hurt you in the long run. Cybercore on the way from bed already now. Okay. That's interesting, I suppose. Uh, where's my shield battery at? It does require a cyber core, so maybe he's going to get a shield battery up here, too. Good heavens to bet. Dude, if you just walk your Zealot in here, you're going to do a massive amount of damage. Blackrock has literally no offensive units. Nothing. At all. Go for it. Move in. Two Zealots, I think, could just win the game right now. Another cannon coming up here, and I don't think that's visible. Oh, it is visible. Ta-da! Oh, if we're thinking about going after this pylon that would depower the gateway, but Probe's fighting. I don't know, Probe's. There's two Zealots here. Oh, and trying to get out, but the cannon, the cannon, actually killing a couple of them. The probe's just full retreating. That is the correct choice. The correct choice is just full on retreat. Now, but already has to assume, okay, either my opponent is really bad or there's something else going on because there is no higher tech here. There were no units. There is no warp gate whatsoever. I really feel like he should be scouting around to see what's going on because there's two immortals up already for Blackrock with one more on the way. Blackrock smiling. You got me, he says. He, he, he. Little do you know. Little do you know that I am capable of murdering you real fast. Cheese race. Wait, what? But already doesn't know there's cheese. I don't think he knows there's cheese or he'd be scouting. I really... Yes, says Ben already. By golly, there is. I, I mean, what are we doing here? Stalkers? No, stalkers are bad against immortals. This three immortal pro push, I think it's just going to win. Blackrock, it's going to be a base race at this point in time. All right, very good. I love a good base race. Love a good base race. Probe, you're trying to expand for Bedardi, but no. Bedardi says, oh, this is what you meant. Oh, this is a huge Artosis pylon. Two gateways, a cyber core, and a forge. Depowered, because that pylon went down. Couple cannons up for Bedardi in the back behind this mineral line, but three immortals are going to be a match. A hundred million percent of a match here. Dude, probes don't fight in range of that cannon. That's bad. You need the probes to live so that these guys don't get surrounded. Oh, but already just retreating with his probes now. And this is getting interesting. Blackrock can't rebuild his base, but already can't rebuild his base either. So I don't know. I guess the probes are just here for additional DPS is what I would assume. Do get the Nexus. The stuff's revealed. Get the Nexus so the stuff's revealed. But already does have 16 probes remaining, which is a good number. Blackrock is sitting on six, which is not great. But again, immortals are effectively immortal in StarCraft 2. Seven kills, six kills, six kills on them already. The, all the higher tech from Bad Artie is going to go down. Oh, but Artie did have enough to make a nexus down here at the third base location of Blackrock. Oh, can he hold on? Can he hold on is the question of the day. Okay, this is why you kill the nexus fast. It's because if you kill it and it says your opponent's being revealed, your opponent's revealed, and that's good. But if you kill it, it says your opponent is not being revealed. Do you know there's another base somewhere that you need to go find? You have to go find it right immediately or very, very bad things very, very bad things will be happening to you. All right, Immortals. I mean, I, I get it. You want to kill the Assimilator? That's totally fine. Totally fine. But now, okay, who knows where what is. He knows about this stuff, and it's going to be some zealous defending it for Bad Artie. He's trying to defend. Wait, no. Those are, oh yes, those are Blackrock's 
Yes, never mind. These <laughs> are actually Black Rocks. Robotics facilities, because of course they are. Mm. So his final Nexus is going to die to these pro... Oh, no, is it? Black Rock. No? Okay. But I'd already had a second to kill it, but then he was worried... He was worried bad stuff was going to happen to him when the Immortals came to town. Scout, scout, scout. You got a scout. You have to know about this base. You have to know about this base. Your opponent is not being revealed. They have a Nexus somewhere. Are you really scouting? Nah, just sending your Immortals out in random positions here while trying to kill an Assimilator with some probes. All right. All right. I guess that's it. Here, Zelts are going to finish off Blackrock's Nexus, thereby revealing him to the world. And there it goes. And yeah, the Immortals get rid of that cannon inside his base. Holding position here against these Zealots. And I just... They're going to win. The Immortals are going to win this thing. They don't do extra damage versus the Immortals. But they're going to win. Is what they're going to do here. So another one's already down. Another one's going to go down here too. Just three Immortals. Even if you're not getting the bonus damage against armored units. Are just still sick. They're expensive. But they're very good. And that's how this works. Alright. So pile on down. Blackrock actually keeps his Nexus. That's amazing. Oh, does he scout over here? He does. He checks out. No, did he see it? Oh, he did see it. Okay, okay. He saw it. He's going to kill this pylon first and then march on down and try to do something against Bad Artie's Nexus over here. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, this might be the final push. Final push from Mr. Blackrock. Gonna move, gonna kill a pylon. Alright, that's fine. But Artie's trying to get a forge up. Cannons are not gonna save you, dude. Cannons are not gonna save you in this situation. I don't even know what you're gonna do against three immortals in this uh, particular set setup. I just... Stalkers are bad. Zealots are bad. Adepts are bad. Um, yeah, maybe a lot of stalkers would have been enough. We don't have time for a lot of stalkers, as it turns out. But Artie running for his life. And he, oh, he built another base here up north. But it is scouted. By Blackrock. Blackrock had a probe up here and says, Aha! I see your sneaky base. Dude, you are in massive amounts of trouble. Blackrock has uh, 17 supply, but already has 18. But all of that is probes. So it's a bit misleading to look at this, uh, at this army supply total unit count and say it's even. Because it's not. It's absolutely not. Worker count is a big deal here. Okay, once again, Nexus down and you say, Oh, not being revealed. A must be this one up here. Final stand. Final stand for Badarty. He doesn't have enough to rebuild his Nexus. He knows. Good micro on display here, too. Not letting his immortal be surrounded. That's a big deal. That's a really big deal. There's no way Badarty wins this thing, is there? I mean, he's still got enough for a single... No, don't chase them. Kill this. Actually, let it finish and then kill it. Okay, good. No, <laughs> we can't get a cancel and a refund for a bad arty and rebuild the Nexus somewhere else. Excellent. That was actually good that he let that finish. Meanwhile, Probe trying to finish off a of Blackrock's final Nexus. Again, it has 12 hit points. Shields are coming back. But hull damage was extensive during that previous attack. All right, so now being revealed. Trying to get rid of these robotics facilities, but there's more than that left. As it turns out, there's no way. There's no way. Bad already wins this thing. Is there? Is there? Oh, he's trying to mine too. That's hilarious. Blackrock trying to mine from this extremely wounded Nexus. The probes might finish off these robotics facilities though. Check this out. Shook it out. Look at it. Look at it. Oh, the immortals are coming. The immortals are coming. Oh, got one. And now they can all focus on the second robotics facility. And they're going to get it by George. These probes are the little probes that could. Little probes that could. And now they're all going to die. Get out of there, probes. Run. Whoa, did they fire and not hit anything? Can that happen? Can mortals fire and not hit a target? Okay, Blackrock. Um, I don't... All he has left... Is... Is Bad already going to win this thing, you guys? He just took out the final Nexus. All he has left is an assimilator and a pylon to kill. This is going to come down to it. Ladies and gentlemen, I know this is a longer game, but by golly, this double cheese turning into a base race is definitely worth casting. I am glad this was chosen. 100%. Gotta trust the screeners, man. Gotta trust them. Here it is. All of the probes. All 14 of the probes are here for Bad Artie. 
Trying to get surrounds, trying to kill this assimilator before the immortals kill them all. It's so close! So close to this Blackrock! No, uh, I think the immortals have this. They are just absolutely <laughs> wrecking these poor probes. Oh, good stutter step, good stutter step. Final probe down, and that's your good game. Wow! Down to one final base. Had three probes remaining. Oh, final couple things here. That's it, though. That's it. What are you, are you seriously going to make us sit here, Bad Artie? You win, and he's out. All right, there it is. There it is. Good times. Good times there. The Immortals, let's check. 25 kills, 21 kills, and 23 kills. <laughs> These Immortals, not too shabby. Not too shabby. Good game. Good game for sure. All right, next one coming up. Just a second. Cheese compilation will continue with a game between Nofi and Purs on Battle on the Boardwalk, the latter edition. In the top right-hand corner of the map, we have the Red Terran player. His name is Purs from Amaze. X. And in the top left hand corner of the map, it is the blue Zerg player Nofi from LLH or Nofi. I'm going to go with Nofi on this one. Double SCV moving out from Per. Triple SC moving out from Purs. What is happening? Okay, this replay was chosen by all three of my screeners. I have high hopes. High hopes. He's got high hopes for this replay. All three of them. Jonathan Logan Squeaks said, This is the one for you, Falcon. Please cast it. And I am. And I am. All right. These guys are obviously proxying something. The other one is obviously scouting, trying to see, is there a pool first here? No, thank goodness. And the expansion coming down here at, looks like, 17 supply for the Nofi. Obviously, there's going to be barracks, so there's nothing else you can build down here except for supply depots. If you want to build supply depots as a proxy position, uh, I, I suppose you can do that. I'm not entirely, entirely convinced that is something you want to do. Right? Yeah, no. Definitely not something that you want to do. Hmm. Walling off here with supply depots. Now, if you're worker scouting as the Zerg or the Protoss or the Terran and you see this, this is the deal. This is what tells you what's going on. It tells you there's cheese. But, Soul Overlord scouting. Actually, it's not that far of a distance here on Battle on the Borderwalk. He's going to see this fairly soon. Does he have gas? No, it's just Marines, man. Just going to be a three racks Marine push. And the title of this replay is Will Cheese Fail? So I don't know if this was sent in by Nofi or Purs. You can send me in replays where you get cheesed and defend it successfully too. That's definitely what this could be. I just, I, I'm as in the dark about this as you guys are. Yeah, it's just Marine. Marine, 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 Marines all the live long day. Nofi has one drone on gas. Okay, Overlord scouted this. Immediate spine crawler down. Immediate spine color down inside the main base for Nofi. Got six lings in production here, too. Effectively has halted. Oh, there's a bunker going down. Look at the position on that drone. Oh, and that bunker, too. Drones are actually better than Marines if the Marines are unupgraded and they don't have stim. Check this out. They're faster. They hit pretty hard. The Marines forced to go ring around the rows. He does end up getting killed here. The bunker's going to finish, though, which is a major problem. No, no, no. Why do you go just work? The lings. Okay, so the lings heading on down south. They're going to pick off individual marines as they come up and murder them. All right, so this bunker's a problem. The natural base is in trouble, but queen, get rid of the SCV. Get rid of the SCV here. Slow lings versus marines. Also not a great fight for marines, as it turns out. But, okay, got three of them here with some SCVs to do some meat shielding. Still not enough, though. Still not necessarily enough. Marines are just getting picked off left and right. Queen may be overextending a little bit coming down here by herself like this, but she needs to see for herself. She needs to see with her own eyes that this is what is going on. More lings and queens here. Nofi! I think Nofi has this. Look at this thing go. Keeping the marine count low. Deal this bunker's not a problem, right? You can lose your natural base. Not going to worry about it here. Marines individually just getting picked off. Oh, one Marine down, two Marines down. This Queen focusing down the wounded Marines first gets three from them. There's only three here. More slow links show up. 18 more links in production. Just got to keep making stuff, says Nofi. And this Marine count is never going to get high enough to really threaten anything at all. What a beautiful response from Nofi here, forcing a lift off on those barracks. Yes, this bunker is a minor, minor problem. But this number of links should be able to surround it as well as they can surround it. This positioning is really great. Actually, from Purs. Ah, the spine crawlers will deal with it. That's what they're doing, too. Spine crawlers will deal with it. The barracks are lifting off, and oh, they're landing over here. They're landing over here. Oh, I don't know about this. All right, the links say we can do this. 
we can win this battle. They're going to go ahead and try to knock down these supply depots at the front door of Purrs. Holy shamoly. He's got barracks building back home, but they're not anywhere near done yet. He must pull the SCVs to repair. And he is. He is pulling the SCVs for the repair. Morlings joining the battle. You got to repair this one down here. You got to repair the southern one. Dude, repair the one in the south. Oh, he, I think he's dead. I think that's it. Failing to repair the southerly one. Now the slowlings are in. And they're just murdering everything. There's the cancel, cancel, cancel. I, uh, it's not great. But he is making some marines on this little boardwalk on the left side of the map. He might be able to catch Nofi by surprise here. Everything he's got is dead. Is problematic. He's got banelings on the way. When did he make a baneling nest? Really? Says Nofi. Yeah, it's not great. Not great, says Purrs. I guess so. I suppose so. There's the lift. Oh, the lift is what he supposes so. <laughs> Gonna make you chase me around, is what he's saying. Dude, this, there's a bunker inside your main base, Nofi, though. I don't know if this is over yet. Come on, I don't mind when I get cheesed. It's okay. It's okay. But why are you salty? Oh, Nofi, you're trying to make... Ah! Marines inside your main! Lings, go home! Lings, travel home! The drones are retreating to the natural base where there is some defense in the form of these spine crawlers. <laughs> he says, what? Where did these marines come from? It's a legitimate question. The Ling's running. Zoof. Running back home. Bailing nest. Down. This is all that Purrs has left, by the way. Broodling's trying to get some shots off. Falling back to the bunker. Falling back to the bunker. This, uh, this is turning into a stalemate. The thing is, Nofi has actual income right now, which is good for him. Spinecrawler's burrowing inside the main base. Ling's getting in the surround. Oh, what a clutch surround there. Oh, that's it. That's gonna be it. I really don't see Purrs coming back. He needed to fall back to that bunker and couldn't do it. And that's it. Nofi's victorious. Finally, says Purrs, and he's left the game. That was good. That was a excellent defense. I mean, letting this bunker come up was a minor problem, but but he never let more than one Marine get in there. So that was great. Slow links to defend until he gets speed. Counterattack. I don't know. Could Purrs have actually repaired that supply depot on the other two? In the time it took for his bunker barracks to get up and make a marine and fill those bunkers, I don't know. Somebody smarter than me will have to tell, but well done. Well done by Nofi and Purrs. Good effort, man. I really like the secondary cheese here on the left side. That was good. Make note of that. Proxy here, Terrans, and then go over to the left side and finish and finish it off. Try to finish it off anyway. Probably hard to do if your first cheese fails. All right. More cheese coming at you in just a second. Well, welcome back to Cheese Compilation. This will be a game between the game... And Suibaku on Blackpink, the latter edition. I like the new maps. The pink is great on this one. In the bottom left-hand corner of the map, it's going to be the red Protoss player. It is the game. Wait, what? Did he just... <laughs> he just recalled his probes to himself. That's amazing. That was fantastic. And in the top right-hand corner of the map, it's going to be the Blue Zerg player, Suibaku. So who's going to be the cheeser? I don't know. You don't know. Nobody knows. Well, I guess my screeners know. And whoever sent this replay in probably knows, too, if they're watching. I don't know. I don't see a lot of comments that say, hey, you chose my cheese. Thanks. I mean, you don't thank me. You choose my. You thank my screeners because they're the ones that chose it. But uh, it's just kind of surprising. Like, Into the Void and Midrake Madness, I get quite a few comments that, oh, you chose my replay. That's great. I liked seeing it cast, but the cheese is just not so much that. I don't know if people submit cheese and then forget they submitted cheese and not watch the next cheese cast, but I don't know. I mean, that's how it works. If you're going to make it into the cheese cast, it's going to be the next one. I don't go back to previous ones and bring people who lost uh, the lost the previous round, so send your cheese. All right, so three hatch before pool here from Suibaku. This is incredibly greedy from the Zerg player, and how's our Protoss player going to handle it? Is the question. He is scouting, which I like very much. I really enjoy the fact that he's scouting here. Natural base, third base on the way. Does he see that third base? Oh. No, he doesn't yet. Go check. Go check for a third. He's checking here for a third base. No, 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 no. You have to check the other place for a third base. Okay, I know you're probably feeling safe right now, but you should feel extra incredibly safe. All right, pylon going down. He this mm, he didn't read this correctly, 
But he's doing the right thing. He's throwing a proxy pylon down here. Might try to warp in some adepts or some zealots or something and to try to take advantage of the fact that the pool for Subaku is not even done yet. Not even the tiniest bit complete. Okay, now it is. Now it is finished. And double gas from Suibaku. Wow, this is really going to pay off in a big way. In a big way for Suibaku. If he can get into the mid game here, he's going to have three bases worth of economy from the two minute mark. Get some queens out here, too. I'd love to see some queen production out of Suibaku. He's not, though. Surprisingly enough, what is going on? I don't know. But that's going to be a robotics facility. Okay, so Proxy Robo from the game. Overlord scouts in, sees a few uh, gateways, sees a cybernetics core. There's really nothing too nuts about this. I don't know that he should be expecting a proxy right about now. The Stalker needs to kill this Overlord. The Stalker needs to make sure that Suibaku doesn't see there's missing higher tech here. There's no additional gateways and there's no additional tech. So it's got to be somewhere else and the only place that makes sense. Okay, you could be proxying DTs or oracles or something up here, but it's probably closer to your base. Probably closer to your base. And all right, robotics facility is done. You're going to make an immortal. An immortal would be pretty fantastic here. Immortal's zealot push right now would be disgusting against Suibaku, who continues to drone up here. Just making five at a time. Got some queens, got some speed, feeling incredibly safe. Again, taking a huge risk, taking a big risk right now. But can he hold it is the question. Anybody going going three hatch before pool is likely on top of things. Right? Likely on top of things. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead <laughs> and put some money on that they know what they're doing to a certain extent. Uh, wow, actually expanding down here is the game for his natural base. Down here on the right side, just south of where he's proxying, strangely enough. All right, so Immortal almost done. Gateways, almost warp gates. What do you do? Stalkers, maybe? I like Zealots. Just because Lings are the big threat to your Immortals, it's going to be Stalkers. And the Lings are very good against Stalkers, too. So here comes a four and a half minute push. Immortal Stalker versus what does Suibaku have? He has no attacking units at all. He's got three Queens and three Spore Crawlers. Oh, he misread this very, very poorly. There's some Zealots here, too. All right, here comes our four and a half minute proxy push with immortal support out of the game apm for these guys fairly low fairly low some of these are lower level level than others but i like what we're seeing here from the game holy 26 zerglings Whoa! the lings just going for the attack <laughs> they're rallied some of them try to stay here and immediately die okay they're all super wounded that was excellent for the protoss player where the lings ran by and got shot at a bunch of times and then came back and tried to finish the job? Oh, did he lose anything? No, the Protoss players lost absolutely nothing. He just killed 28 Zerglings. 28 Zerglings! Queen here in a lot of trouble. Spore Crawler in absolute no use right now. None whatsoever, but buying time is the Queen. A couple more of these Stalkers show up. Zerglings running out, trying to get surrounds on the Stalkers. Gets a full surround on these guys. Zealots need to assist. Oh, Stalker's going down. One goes down. Two goes down. Three goes down. Four going down. That's how good Lings are against the Stalkers. Zealots trying to hack it here. They all end up dead. And now it's just Ling against Stalker. Immortal. 20 more Zerglings in production. Suibaku has the ability to do this because of some decent injects. Not right now, but probably previously. A ton of available larva. And was planning on doing a Ling Flood anyway and just kind of accidentally hopped into this perfect Ling defense of the Stalker Immortal thing that the game is trying to do. It's just not going to it's not gonna work is what we're seeing here. Nope, absolutely not. Too many Zerglings. Too few Zealots. If the Zealots had plus one attack, maybe? Maybe at that point? This Immortal does have 13 kills though, right? Not actually being focused down by the Lings allows him to just sit back and get a lot of kills. Help me, Immortal. You're my only hope, says the Stalker. No, there it is. There it is. 17 kills. Is it enough to get through this attack? Killing Zerglings pretty quickly, but Ling's attack so fast. 20 kills and dead. 20 kills and dead. I mean, the game's in a lot of trouble. It's 38 to 25 Harvesters. Suibaku has actually been droning behind this as well. Got a Spire on the way, got an Infestation Pit on the way, and the game is sitting on one base. Well, okay, technically two bases. But 26 workers, a robotics facility, 
and three gateways. It's just not enough. It's not enough. Suibaku actually having a hard time spending his money right now. He does have the ability to toss down a whole ton of Mutalisk once that Spire pops, though. Which would be pretty nice. The third base is in a little bit of trouble, but guess who's going to come save the day? That's right. A million Zerglings! A million Zerglings. 82 have already died. 85 have already died. <laughs> More have already died. 94 lings have died in the first seven minutes of this game. Poor Stalker. Get out of there. Good. I mean, decent micro, but just not enough. Really just not enough. If the Zealots had plus one, this would be a much different battle. Goodbye, Zealots. And I just... I think that's going to be it. The game continues to throw the Zealots at this dude. But there are enough lings. Lings coming from all three bases here to just get absolutely surrounded. This is a Protoss Zealots nightmare. Actually, that's amazing positioning. Out of the game, not allowing a surround, still dies. But man, did you see that little curve that he put up? No surround available. Dang, that was amazing. Link counterattack coming in, but that's what the game's done. The game is defeated. And Suibaku is victorious with three hatch before pool. Into a million speedlings into Mutalisks at the end. Surprise, who knew? Who knew? All right, more cheese on your way in just a second. More cheese of the TVT variety is here between Codex and Bits Please on Abyssal Reef, the latter edition. In the bottom right hand corner of the map, it's going to be the Red Terran player. His name is Codex from Pract. And in the top left hand corner, it's going to be the Blue Terran player, Bits Please from Cheese, with a 53 at the end instead of an SE, which is totally fine. All right, this one was chosen by two. Two of the three screeners really like this one. Actually, hold on. This might be all three of them like this one. So this could be a universally <laughs> beloved cheese replay TVT style. Which, TVT is probably my favorite mirror matchup right now just because of the sheer variety of stuff you can do. We see Vikings. We see tanks, obviously. We see Cyclones. We see Reapers. We see Ravens. We see Battle Cruisers. We see Marines and Marauders and Medivacs. All number of things are available in the TVT. It's not just who has the most of this. Or who is the best at this particular strategy? Remember PvP back in Wings of Liberty, Protoss players? It was just who could get Stalker Colossus up fastest? Who could get the most Colossus? And then they would win. It was not great to cast. It was not great to watch either. I'm glad it seems like StarCraft, it seems like Blizzard has put some effort towards making the mirror matchups a little bit more varied. Zerg is actually pretty good too. Late game Zerg especially. If you can get past the early Ling Roach stuff into about the 10, 12, 14 minute mark, it turns into an amazing thing. For sure. I cast a ZVZ last week. I want to say it was last week. And it was incredible. Incredible. I think it was Penguin. What was it Penguin? I feel like it was a Penguin ZVZ. Go watch. Go search Penguin. P-E-N-G-W-I-N on my channel. If you don't usually watch ZVZ, go watch that ZVZ. Do it. Do it. As long as I'm plugging stuff. Podcast up. Podcast is up today. It is the Wade and Falcon Paladin Star Wars Extravaganza. We talked The Last Jedi for about an hour and a half. We have a lot of thoughts. I'm not going to spoil anything. It is an amazingly fun time. There are revelations about the film that I didn't know about. Uh, check it out. There's a link in the description. It's free. It's available on your smartphone. No matter what kind of smartphone you have, anywhere you can download podcasts, you can find the Falcon Paladin Hour. All right, so that's a ghost rush. Codex has... A Ghost Academy up, and a Ghost in Production. That skin looks weird. That skin look weird? Looks skinny and faceless. It's like Slenderman here. Where are you, Ghost? When you come out, I'm going to take a close look at you. So cloaks have default ghost, right? De default, default cloak. Default cloak. All right, you look fine. You are missing your face, though. Like... Whatever whatever kind of crazy Tron suit you're wearing, your face is covered. I don't know how you see anything, but that's fine. We're going to roll with it. We're going to roll with this. Notice cloak available immediately. But starting energy of the ghost has dropped a little bit. It used to start out at like 75, which is crazy fast, crazy high. But it dropped down to closer to 50. But by the time you get across the base, you're going to have uh, 75 energy anyway. And there's your nuke. Codex with the nuke. We're going to follow this ghost on his mission. Dun, 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 sneaking around the southern section, passing all sorts of crazy underwater fauna. Good thing his suit is also a scuba suit at the same time. That is my understanding of how he can do this. 
dun 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 Bits, please. Has some Marines. Oh, he sees the ghost. There's the cloak. Oh, the Marine push from Bits, please, though. Oh, my gosh. I totally missed this. Uh, <laughs> what do you do? What do you do here? I mean, I guess the ghosts do very well against Marines, but there are 25, 26 Marines on the field. Holy shklarkies. Bunkers. Immediately make bunkers. Immediately make a tank. Immediately put some ghosts or some marines inside these bunkers. You gotta make stuff, dude. Coat, you gotta make stuff. And the ghost. No! Run! Get out of the circle! Does get out of the circle. Oh my gosh, he's alive. He's got eight kills. He's a corporal. He is single handedly trying to win this game. And there's your nuke. Oh, it's gonna base race this thing. Nuke in the mineral line of bits, please, dude. Move these SCVs. Move the SCVs. Big attack. Still, marines just murdering stuff. Down here at the front door of Codex, but the nuke is going to land. Ah, the SCVs were pulled. At the very last second. Ghost just trying to keep this marine count lower, but I don't think it matters. Oh no, ghost player. <laughs> it turns out if you want to be beat a nuke rust, just go three racks marine. And murder everything. Murder all of the things and dodge the nuke. That's it. That's all you gotta do. All right, this ghost has six kills. Is going to get surrounded by SCVs and die. Say oh, die. never say die. You just, you just did. You just said die. These SCVs are gone. I mean, Bits please has this thing won. Trying to find his orbital command. Dang it, Codex! Don't be BM. Okay, he rage quit. There we go. He's out. Bits please is victorious just by going three Marax Marine. And a TVT, which is the equivalent of just going 12 pool and ZVZ and trying to end it fast, right? If you hate TVT, you just go three racks marine and either I win or I lose. I'm not going to worry about it. Just a coin flippy build. All right. More cheese coming at you in just a second. Two out of three screeners liked this replay. It's going to be between Ratiz and FTG on Abyssal Reef, the latter edition. In the bottom right-hand corner of the map, we're going to have the red Protoss player. His name is Ratiz. And in the top left-hand corner, it's going to be the blue Terran player, FTG, which stands for Fun Times Guy. Fun Times Guy. That's, that's who this dude is. Fun Times Guy. All right. Who's the cheeser today? That's an engineering bay. Is going to be the cheeser. This is absolutely a planetary rush. Or a planetary fortress rush. If you scout someone and they've got an engineering bay before anything else, uh, scout and prepare for planetary fortress rush. Here is the SCV. He has been entrusted with the solemn mission of building an instrument of death to murder his Protoss opponent. Speaking of which, did you see the teaser trailer for Mortal Machines? Is that what it's called? I have trouble problems with the title. It's a Peter Jackson film based on a couple stories by an author and the books don't exist in my local library system so i'd like to maybe get them a try but uh should i spoil it i mean i guess the premise of mortal machines is that cities have been converted into moving like giant mad max transformer contraptions and they just roll around the earth and find other smaller cities to absorb so they can keep running it's a very interesting premise the teaser trailer doesn't give away anything more than that. I just, uh, I'd like to, ch it's Peter Jackson. He makes, he makes pretty good films, right? The comments are just full of, but, but Falcon, the Hobbit. Yeah, you're right. The Hobbit trilogy was bad. Maybe Peter Jackson's losing his touch. Maybe Lord of the Rings is as good as he's ever going to get. He did the Kongs too, right? One of the Kongs anyway, wasn't the Peter Jackson flick? But the recent ones weren't. I actually don't know. I don't know if only I had IMDb in front of me. But I'd have to stop casting, and I can't do that. Can't stop the cast. Can't stop the cast. All right, so the only question is, is this going to be seen? Are the SCVs, or the probes, rather, going to be pulled to kill this thing before it turns into a PF? And if they do kill it before it turns into a PF, that's a win for the Protoss player. I like that he's got this pylon up here. It really makes landing this command center in a place and not being seen impossible. Right? If this pylon wasn't here, you could chuck it... I mean, well, here's the thing. You can't hide it anyway, because it needs to be in range of stuff to kill. So, <laughs> forget I said anything. High sec auto tracking on the way. That's going to increase the range of the PF if ever, ever does finish. Another command center. He's going to try to do a second command center. All right. The other thing you can do is get a probe under it before it lands. All right. Nope. 
That is not going to happen. And here's the upgrade. Ratiz, no. Ratiz, respond. Ratiz. Ratiz, there's a giant blue thing in your base. Look at your mini map. Oh, there's a zealot. Okay, Mr. Zealot wants to get rid of this thing. Yeah. Yeah. I will hack your metal to death with my Psy Blades. Psy yeah, Blades. Oh, I've got a friend here with me. That's even better. I mean, it's not going to work. The DPS is good here, but not enough. You need to bring some probes as well. If you're struggling with this, Protoss players, that's the answer. A lot of probes. Kill it before it finishes. Also, get your zealots out of there before they die. I guess it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Poor stalker. He's trying to. Can I outrange this as the stalker? No, you cannot. <laughs> Even before, right? Range of six. Stalkers have a range of six. I, I don't think they can outrange PFs, even if the high sec auto tracking upgrade isn't there. Right? Yeah, can't do it. Same, same range, dudes. Same range. Retreat. Re expand to the natural base. But guess what? There's another one coming. There's another one coming. This is one of my favorite cheeses. It just is. Planetary Fortress Rushes are just so stupid. And they're so insane. Can you imagine in real life? You're just sitting there in your base, trying to build some stuff, and suddenly a building comes floating over the horizon, lands, builds a couple guns, and murders you. Another planet another planetary from FTG. The fun time guy truly is a fun time guy. He truly, truly is. This one's not even upgrading to a planetary fortress. It is now! The stalker shooting at it, spurt it. Directly into action. <laughs> this is amazing. Amazingly incredible. Alright, well, um, um, I mean, that's it, I think. Maybe Ratiz can rebuild his life here at the natural base. That seems like something that could happen anyway. Poor Stalker. Let's watch him die. Hey, Stalker, you should get out of the way now. That PF is almost done. Almost done. Ugh. Two. Is he five shot? Four shot it? Five shot. Just two hit points left after that fourth shot. Pylon going down. Not an Artosis Pylon. Uh, FTG doesn't know how to do anything but Planetary Fortress Rush. I take that back. He has some Marines. Got some Marines, but that's it. Ratiz decides time is up. Time is up, my friend. Planetary Fortress of the day is Planetary Fortress victory of the day. Good job. Good job, FTG. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Cheese. This will be a game between Dragon and No Stranger here on Neon Violet Square, the latter edition. In the top left-hand corner, it's going to be the Red Terran player. His name is No Stranger. And in the bottom right-hand corner, it's going to be the Blue Protoss player, Dragon, from Neverez. We've seen this name before. We have, in fact, seen this name previously. Two out of the three screeners chose this one. Jonathan was one. The other one, I'm not entirely certain about that. I, I, I trust Jonathan's judgment, Jill, though. This should be great. This should be very good. The only... <laughs> I only have one clue about this, and it's the replay name, and I don't know what to make of it. So I'm not going to share it with you in case you guys are smarter than me and say that gives everything away. Yeah, doofus. Why'd you tell us the replay name? So I'm not going to do it. Not going to do it. But it's a TVP, of which we don't have much on the channel. We don't have much of the cheese, but you know what? It's here today. It is here today in this cheese compilation. TVP fans can rejoice. Rejoice. TVP is here. Anything crazy going on? I'm trying to see. Uh, barracks, gateways, gas. Double gas now from Dragon off of one base. That is a little bit suspicious. Again, considering he had a replay earlier in this uh, in this thing, he's probably cheesing. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll watch him very, very closely. I like the war chest skin. I like it. Kind of like a white highlight on these guys. Kind of like ice. Kind of like white walkers, actually. Look at that. Kind of a white skin and blue eyes thing going there. Mmm. That's fantastic. Reaper. Reaper on No Stranger. Really don't... I guess now that Photon Overcharge is gone, Reaper's probably a little bit more standard than it used to be in TVP. Just because you got to have good Adept Control or Stalker Control to get rid of it. You can't just Photon Overcharge it when it gets close to a pylon anymore and it's instantly dead. Terran players rejoice. Should we give this guy a name? I don't usually name Reapers. I don't usually name them. In the cheese replays, because the replays are so dang short, and usually action is happening, but no action here, so let's give this dude a name. 
This is going to be... Man, this is a very popular. Very popular selection. Gabriel Reyes. After he was kicked out from Black Watch, he joined Talon. Then he was kicked from Talon, so he decided to join the Reaper Corps and be a good guy again. So killing that probe, he actually looks buff. That is a buff Reaper skin. He's got knives on his guns. <gasps> it's like a bayonet. Bayonet pistol. Which I'm pretty sure exists. I think I've seen a picture of it, but... That is awesome. That is super great. Zoom, 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 zoom. Going through the pachinko machine. Plinko. Plinko, pachinko. There's a lot of options here. There were a previous cast, I asked what this was. What this reminded me of. And they said it was going to be one of those two. Plinko is a price of right game. Price is right game. That actually follows that very closely. Pachinko is another one. So yeah, a lot of variations on the theme, it turns out. Sentry on the way for Dragon. But this Reaper might just kind of be able to do some stuff. Sentry, though... Do we often see Sentry versus Reaper? I don't know that we do. Holy Zealot skin. Wow. I'm so distracted by that. He's got Wolverine claws. What? It's like X2 claws. X23. What is... What is the girl in Logan? Is she X23 or 24? I think she's 23. Dude, the two claws. It's here. Plus giant old shoulder pads. Looks like Marine suit. It's a marine suit with wolverine claws is what I am utterly and completely distracted by this zealot. Okay, back. Back to focusing. Gabriel Reyes has um, a probe kill. It's fine. Still alive. Uh, Terran player working on the Hellions. He's got himself a medevac too. He's making some marines. None of this is cheese. You're very boring, Terran player. Very boring indeed. And we do have a void ray. So void ray. What is this thing? What is going on? This looks like a pretty standard game. Two of you cheese, two of you screeners who sent me this replay have some explaining to do if this turns out to be incredibly boring. Oh, wait. Is he going to do mass void ray hallucination win? <gasps> we saw that last week. Not last week. Two weeks ago in the last cheese. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I gave it away. Maybe I gave it away, you guys. I don't know. I don't know if I did. But Do these probes do orange lasers? Instead of the blue, that's kind of neat. Okay, I like this. Might be my favorite war chest skin right here. This one, whatever the whatever dragon's using, that's it. It's my favorite. My favorite. Sentries look the same. Stalkers look kind of boxy. They've got the same marine aesthetic that the zealots do, but nothing else is cool about them. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, yeah, Hellion's in trouble, man. This is a lot of stuff. But ooh, the drop on the backside. Is this a widow mine? <gasps> widow mine marine drop. Other oh, marines have a cool skin too. Wow, they look like Mad Max. They got spiked shoulder pads. Hmm. All right. So then everybody comes up the recall to deal with this fantastic recall. Widow mine burrows and does get a shot off. Bam! Killing one of the zealots before it dies because it is decloaked. It's cloaked after firing. Another attack up the front here with the Hellions. Whoosh. Goodbye, probes. You are awesome looking probes, but that will not save you from sheer flame. Sheer flame. Oh, man. That just cleaned out the natural base except for one probe. That was brutal. That was 12 probes have been lost so far. What? All right, dragon. You're in trouble, dude. Here's the problem. Even if you do the sentry mass void ray fake out, no stranger saw how many sentries you have. And says, no, not allowed. Right? I'm pretty sure that's it. Oh, that's Liberator too. Man, Dragon is just getting his butt kicked right now. He is in so much trouble. He's down 37 to 20 Harvesters. He needs this to work. He needs this gamble to work or he's dead. Look how cool these guys are. As my voice cracks. Apparently, I'm 13 years old. That's what I am, 13. Yeah, uh, more probes dying. Dragon not doing a great job babysitting his probes, as it turns out. Liberators, just, I don't know, they wreck people at the lower leagues. If you're having trouble winning at the lower leagues as Terran, make Liberators. You'll have a pretty good time. And there it is. There's the hallucinated Void Ray attack. <laughs> at least they can absorb damage, right? They can absorb damage. Guardian Shield is up here, too. Is this thing going to work? Does he have detection is the question. Some of these Void Rays are going to lose. They're going to run out of energy here fairly soon. Bunker down. Marines down. Sentries killing SCVs. They're not good at killing much, but killing SCVs is something that they can do. Uh, some Marauders are out. Not a great answer when there are Void Rays on the field here. And suddenly it's 25 to 20 Harvesters. 
Dragon's not down as much anymore. And I don't know if No Stranger bought it, right? But at the very least, the Hallucinated Void Rays absorbed a ton of damage that otherwise would have been on Void Rays. And the Void Rays are effectively untouched. 11 kills and 7 kills on these guys. Yeah, I mean, if you show up without the Hallucinations... Now, the converse of that is if you'd showed up with the number of Stalkers <laughs> that you could have made instead of the Sentries, you probably would have been just as well off, right? That's... That's usually how this works. Yeah, trying to get missile turrets up here is no stranger. Not really working out. Couple marines, couple Mad Max marines trying to get rid of these void rays, but it's not going very well for them. Some of these are trapped behind force fields. Pretty good force field production as well. Repairing this orbital command, which seems like an odd choice. Build the missile turret. Yeah, doof. Oh, one of the void rays goes down to a very being repaired Viking. That's what they're repairing. Nope, but it's dead. The stalkers do finish it off. This is an intense, tight little battle here. And again, I think Dragon... Well, maybe Dragon doesn't have to win this right now because he does have a base back home. And he is up in worker count, and suddenly the missile turrets are done. Void Ray, no! Void Ray dead. Void Ray dead, but Zealot's in great position against these SCVs who are fighting for their lives. Stalkers assisting with the DPS. The sentry's here too, and that's going to be it. Dragon wins it. 10 kills on that Stalker. Well done. More Zealots joining the party. Wow, that was fun. That was a fun one. Again, I'm not convinced that No Stranger was um, confused or tricked. But still, worked out. All right, more cheese coming at you in just a second. Delicious fromage here in the form of a TBT on Blackpink, the latter edition between Luis Osornio versus Raisquai. Man, these are hard names. In the bottom left-hand corner of the map, it's going to be the Red Terran player from Chumbi. It is Luis Orsonio. Orsonio. Who is that? <laughs> kind of looks like a doofy Brendan Fraser. That's what I'm seeing. Doofy Brendan Fraser. And in the top right-hand corner of the map, it is the blue Terran player, Raisquai. Raisquai versus Luis. Luis Orsonio. That is a fun, fun name to say. A lot of names in Spanish are fun to say. I assume this is Spanish. Could be Portuguese, in which case Luis is very mad at me because confusing Portuguese with Spanish makes them upset, which is understandable. If people try to tell me that Canadian English is the same as American English, I get really mad. Actually, I don't because it is the same. It's the same. I've got several friends from Western Canada and... If you talk to them and you talk to me, you couldn't tell who the American was. Except sometimes they say their O's a little differently. A little tiny bit differently. But otherwise, you could never tell. Alright, is that a command center first? Raisquai is going command center first against his opponents. Meanwhile, oh, Luis has some cheese. He's got some cheese. Oh, this is so bad for Raisquai. This is so bad. Through Raisquai. He's going command center first against someone who is going double barracks proxy against him. Just outside of this natural base. It's not somewhere he'd be likely to scout. Although it is where... Well, you put your third down here too. I guess there's about a 50-50 chance he would scout this place when going for his third. But considering the fact he won command center first, I don't really see that happening. And an engineering bay. What? Is he planetary fortress rushing on defense? Rice Squad, you must tell me your ways. Why on earth? Why on earth would you try this? I'm thinking about it. Can't come up with an answer. All right, Rice Squad. If you upgrade this to a planetary fortress, I'm going to be just flabbergasted. Ready, set, go. It is! <laughs> He's upgrading his natural to a PF. And it's going to be in time for this marine rush. Holy shamoly. Worlds collide. Luis going for a quadruple barracks marine rush and is going to run into a guy who randomly makes a planetary fortress inside his natural. I mean, I okay, here's the thing. Luis, ideally, you should be able to win this thing just by walking past it and attacking and wrecking the main because that's not going to be a PF. But this is absolutely hilarious. Hey, check it out. My PF is done. Bam! Yeah, keeps his marines alive, does Luis. And, oh, but the marines on the high ground from Raisquai. Winning that battle. All right, couple marines down. PF has zero kills, but does have an assist on one. You should track assists, right? Yeah, they should track assists in StarCraft. If you do damage to a unit and then something else kills it, you get an assist. 
even if it's just one HP of damage done, which... Does anything do a single HP? I guess maybe Lings, where they're attacking something that has a lot of armor, could go down to one HP of damage. But I don't think, just generally, there's not one HP per attack. Uh, Ricequai says, what is this? What's all this, then? Oh, it's so many barracks. Are these reactors? These are <laughs> reactors, too. Yeah, there's no gas back home. Oh, wait, there's a gas. There's a gas for the reactors, but... Uh, could this just be Reaper? I don't know. SCV pull. SCV pull. Gotta kill the Marine. Well, one Marine dies very easily there. Trying to kill reactors, which... I don't know this is your primary target, but okay. Marines are here too. I think Luis is just dead. What's he making? He's making five Marines at a time, but they're gonna pop out at different intervals here. There they are. Marine... Look at this. Marine meat... Oh, man. The SCV's meat shielding extremely well right now. Yeah. Yep. That's going to be all she wrote. Ladies and gents, the SCV is playing a massive part in this defense right now. Just jumping on these Marines as soon as they pop out. Welcome to hell, they say. <laughs> Your lifespan after training is one second. You get one second. Say goodbye to your squad mates. Yeah. Terran scum. Well, actually, you're Terran too, so maybe you can't say that. I mean, this is just disgusting. This is 17 Marines killed by Ricequai, and he has lost un two SCVs and two Marines. Two. These SCVs are murderers. How many kills do they have? Again, probably assists, right? The Marines stealing a lot of them. One barracks goes down. Luis trying to retreat for his life now, but he's just done. This was his production, and it's dead. Absolutely dead. Making somebody was making tanks back here. It was Rice Guy. Rice Guy is making tanks. Counterattack time. It's going to be a really solid counterattack time. Heading on down, cross the map. Maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. One of Luis's SCVs is still alive somehow. Somehow, some way, still alive. Trying to go home. One of them actively burning down. Yes, one of them actively burning down. I think it's, you know what, if, again, we, did we see this? We saw this somewhere, but if you get cheese and you successfully defend it, counterattack. Your opponent does not have production facilities. They put them all over here. So they're not making an army back home, especially not Terran and Protoss. I mean, Zerg maybe could mount some kind of a defense, but if they proxy hatched you, they're on one base, which is not going to be that great. Yeah, here we go. Handful of Marines and a tank. All the SCVs went back to work. It's going to be a two base versus a one base affair here. 23 to 25 total harvesters. Rice Quai is up. And we'll continue to increase that lead. Yeah, one of the barracks down. Actively burning. Will the other one make it back inside the main is the question here. But tanks are a major problem. Major, major problem. Oh, is he going to port Banshee in response? Luis is trying to go to port Banshee with tanks of his own. In response, this window is small, Ricequai. This is not a big window. You need to do something here. There it is. Siege moding on the top of the ramp. As top as it can get. And going to try to ruin some stuff. The Marines do take out a barracks. They're a little bit distracted here. Tank trying to kill a tech lab on that factory. Doesn't really matter. Gets, no, have a, oh, I got to get a hit off on that tank. And does. One more hit on the tank and one more hit on the tank. Does kill the tank. All right, that was big, and that was big. Luis Arsonio is defeated, and Ricequai was victorious. Yeah, the proxy, man. That was just nuts. Ricequai randomly goes Planetary Fortress at his natural. I guess he's been Marine Rushed before. It seemed like he was prepared for that. Prepared immediately. Like, just built an engineering bay right off the bat. Didn't even scout or anything. Fantastic. Fantastic game. All right, more cheese. Maybe two, three more coming at you. Just a second. Welcome back to Cheese, ladies and gentlemen. This is a 3v3 cheese that all three of my screeners loved. So here we go. On Misty Swamp, on the right side, we have Team A. It's going to be the Red Zerg player Nova Flash from GG Ants. His teammate, the Teal, uh, light blue, light blue Terran player Sloth from GG Ants. And the dark blue Protoss player Drew Khan. This is a huge map. I've played on this map before. 3v3 action is nuts on this map. And Team B on the left side. Going to be the yellow Protoss player, Iowa Wadaba. Iowa Wadaba. Sure. And the purple Terran player, NH 
NYHC. And the orange Zerg player, Garathak. Oh, I love the orange. The orange is so pretty. So pretty. Orange and yellow are my favorites. They are my favorite colors. I will take them in all team games, given the chance, if at all possible. All right. So 3v3 cheese that all three screeners loved and enjoyed highly. Let's see what we get. Let's see what we get from this one today. Spawning pool on the Zerg player for team A. Uh, looks like a one base attack, which you really do have to expect. I mean, nobody's expanding. In 3v3 and 2v2, if you expand, you're just going to die. Forge on the way here from Drew Khan. So possibly some cannon rushing. Yes, cannon rushing also very popular in 3v3. I have been the victim of it. And on the same team as a cannon rusher more than once. More than once in my life. All right, pylon. Very sneaky pylon here. I'm just out of range of that vision. Is this actually out of range of the vision? Let's see. Uh, team. It's actually not out of the vision. That is totally in the vision. So that's a problem. Response here is not great. From Wadaba. Come on, Wadaba. Respond. See what's going on. Nova Flash is expanding to the gold in the south. I, Wadaba is tossing down a gateway way down here in the south too. Now you might think this is way out of the way, but your attack path is actually, if you start here, down, right? Down, 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 around this thing. Up, 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 up. Whoa, I got lost. But you know what I mean. But shoot, cannons are here. Oh boy. If one manages to get up, that's all it really takes. One gets up here, another gets up here, the cannon rush. Looking strong. Lings down for Nova Flash. Trying to do what? What are you trying to do, Nova Flash's Lings? Come assist. Come assist with the attack. Yeah, it's a long rush distance. It is a surprisingly long, long rush distance. Cannon just doing work here. Ah, Lings find the proxy from Iwadaba, which is a problem. The guy proxying... Right? The one proxying is the one that's getting cannon rushed, which is just bad. That is just... The universe kind of hates you. Kind of hates you at this point here. Somebody pinging up north. Not sure what that's all about. Ravagers! Okay! Gareth, that got some Ravagers out. He's going to go ahead and get rid of these cannons. It'll take him some time. Oh, Warp Gate does finish on that Cyber Core before the cannon takes it out. Wadaba wins that one. Marines... And Ravagers trying to get rid of this cannon rush. Perhaps overextending a little bit is Drew Khan, but I don't know. Maybe he made his point. Getting rid of the pylon that was powering this proxy gateway for Wadaba. Yeah, this cannon rush is going to die. Final active cannon down. The other ones are building, but well, this one finishes the question. Maybe. Maybe it will. Not everybody's actually attacking it. And there we go. And it dies. It almost phases into existence. And then it dies. All right, so Cannon Rush fairly well shut down here by Team B. Team B looking great. Anytime you can shut down a Cannon Rush like that and have minimal losses, you're going to be okay. That Cyber Core is down to nine hit points. Nine. Nine total hit points here. Whoa. Sloth is building a million supply depots. Why, Sloth? Why? <laughs> All right, whatever. Ling's knocking down the rocks in this gold base up north so that they can expand to it. Counterattack. On the way here, Ravagers, though, taking out an Overlord. Garethak kind of knows what he's doing. I like this Orange Zerg player. He is a man of taste and skill. Good taste and skill. Trying to kill that Overlord, but too smart this time. Too dang smart this time. Going to try to knock down these rocks to allow easier access to the southern section of the right side of the map. Rocks finally go down up north for this gold base. And usually if you want to attack in a 3v3, you want to attack with your teammates. That's just kind of kind of how it works. All right, Stalker is heading down south. Roach is joining for Garethak too. Garethak expanding at the gold base of his own. Zerglings for Nova Flash. They were kind of defending this gold base of his, but uh, no, not anymore. Surprise Roaches while the Lings are away. Oh, that hurts. That hurts immensely. All right, Queen down. Hatcher going to die too. How many drones will die is the question. One, just one. The others get out of there pretty quickly. Good reaction time. These links were busy taking out rocks. I was going to say, get down here and defend your hatchery. It's too late though. It is super too late. Roach is here for Garethak as well. Stalker is not really on the same page. Come on, 3v3 guys. You got to work together. If you're going to win this thing. This is a lot of links though. That is a lot of Zerglings for the Red Zerg player. He's got 46 of them. 
46. Actually pretty good at killing larva, Roach and Ravager. All right, Lings. You want to get a surround on this? I don't know. I don't know. Tank here for Sloth. Single tank? Yeah, that's enough to chase away Garethak temporarily. Then it says, wait, was that a single tank? Meanwhile, Stalker's pushing in versus Thor. Ugh, you do extra damage versus Thor's, but... Yeah! Thor's are good. All right, one Thor goes down from Sloth, but kills four Stalkers. More Stalkers joining the party. They say, wait, no. They've got Blink. They've got Blink. Zerk attack from the south. Oh, the Lings once again away from home while the expansion is under direct assault. Lings here to try to defend the Thors against the Stalkers. But in the meantime, you're totally sacking your natural base. You can't be on one base, dude. He's going to try to save it this time. He's going to try to save Oh, it's can't save it. Can't. Didn't even really try. Ow. Ow. That really hurts. Team B looking strong. Oh, finally, NYHC joins the party. Zealots and a ton of Marines with plus one, plus one. Just waltzing on up here. And that, I think that's it. Yeah, Sloth is out. Uh, these Lings trying to win a battle against these Roaches and these Ravagers, but the surround, now it's kind of happening, but it's a little bit too late. No, actually, it is not too late. Lings winning that one handily. Oh, but then Nova Flash loses the game anyway, recognizing too many Marines, too many Marauders. From NHYC, the counterattack after the failed cannon rush, or rather the defended cannon rush. And Team B is your winner. Yellow, purple, and orange. Garethak, NHYC, and Yadadaba. <laughs> Wadaba are your victors. Good one. Good one for sure. All right. One more replay. Again, simultaneous? No. What's the word I'm looking for? Unanimous. Unanimous votes to cast this final game. Stick around. You won't regret it. The final game of this particular cheese compilation will be between <laughs> Bits Please and his teammate Foxhound versus I'm Gay For You and Heffernan here on Flooded City. I didn't realize this was a 2v2. I really didn't. All right, so we'll call them Captain America in the South Red versus Blue and then Team Joker up north with kind of the tealish and the purple going on. We've seen, we've, I've cast games on this map. Haven't I? I absolutely have here. All right, so this is a high level 2v2. I am told this is a master level game. Master level 2v2 team game, which I did not realize was really a thing, but turns out perhaps it is. And there's these crazy lightning strikes. Crazy, ooh, there's one that leave crazy divots, like craters in the ground. This is a beautifully designed map. It freaks me out when I play it because the lightning strikes make me say, what just happened? What was that? Was it a drop? Oh, was it Banelings? Oh, no, it was just, it was that lightning again. You can see where they struck. I've always kind of thought, I've probably said this last time I cast on this map, but I always kind of thought that um, the lightning strikes should actually do damage to things that they hit. Like, not a ton of damage, just a tickle, right? Like, 10 damage splash to everybody in the radius. That'd be fantastic. Ugh, I'd laugh so hard. It'd be imbalanced as, as all get out, so let's not, let's not get too carried away, but... It looks like a pool first from both of these players. Heffernan and I'm Gay For You are absolutely going for a... What well, looks like a Speedling Rush. Oh, there's Banelings from Heffernan, though. Possibly a Baneling Bust. Overlord scouts in for Heffernan. Says, okay, there's a nice wall off here. It's the only way for us to get in unless we do some Drop Lord action. But nobody has an Evolution Chamber, so that's not... Not in the cards. As it turns out. Man, I just... I'm so... I just love lightning storms. I live in Utah. We don't get rain a whole lot, and thunderstorms are super rare, too. So when we get one, it's just... I want to go outside and just enjoy it. Um, Not out in it, necessarily. I don't stand in the middle of an open field and invite lightning to strike me. But I will sit on my porch and <laughs> enjoy the show. Ah, I'm so far away from that, though. It's, it's not even January yet, you guys. Eh. All right, before this gets too further in, quick plug for my Patreon. If you've uh, enjoyed the cast thus far, please consider visiting patreon.com slash falconpaladin and subscribing to me for as little as a dollar a month. It would be much appreciated. Those of you who are at the $5 a month level, I owe you a question and answer, and I am so sorry. I will get that up tomorrow. It will come tomorrow, okay? All right. Fantastic. I hope you enjoy it. All right. We got Lings sneaking on down. We got Banelings as well and it's gonna be a bailing bust gotta get this gotta get the get the supply depot are you gonna i guess the pylons fine the pylon works too lings are in single bailing survives ling getting surround on the marines good micro getting those marines to the back wall but they're all gonna die too many links here anyway the ling flood is for real 
ladies and gentlemen, making some uh, stalkers, which we've seen stalkers against Lynx in this particular cast. It doesn't actually go very well at all for the stalkers. These poor Marines, they were rallied to the wrong place and the wrong time. Are there more Lynx coming here? Gotta plug up that hole. Gotta plug up that wall. Team Captain America, come on. Come on, you can do it. More Lings joining the party, and the longer this goes on, the more I think Captain America might be able to stabilize here. No, no, right here. But right here. Oh, too many Zerglings. All the Marines are dying. All the Marines are dying. The Stalkers, again, not great in the situation, but... But perhaps... Oh, Lightning Strike. Lightning Strike. Go Probes. Go Probes. Assist. Assist more links coming. Ah, trying to build, trying to build a supply depot wall. Uh, this marine player, Mr. Bits, please, has just absolutely lost so many marines. But dang it, if he's not alive, dang it, if he's not alive right now. All right, so income tab. Let's take a look. It's 18 and 21 for Team Captain America. 11 and 13 for Team the Joker. Yeah, Team the Joker invested heavily into this early ling rush, continuing to make these guys, continuing to make bane links. But the longer this goes on, the worse it is for him. Just Marines. Just Marines from Bits Please here. He's on five barracks. He's got no gas. He was planning on rushing two, you guys. <laughs> he just got beat to the punch by these speedling players. Whoosh. Calling down a mule. Whoosh. Zerglings and Banelings going. This feels like a last hurrah. They are not droning up back home at all. Even the teeniest or tiniest of bits. Pylon finished. Oh, actually coming out to meet them. Interesting. Banelings target fired down. Other Banelings getting target fired before they can finish morphing on in here. And that's it. I'm gay for you as gone. Good Baneling hits, but it's not enough. Wow, that's a lot of dead Marines. But he's out. He is out. Purple player Heffernan here is on almost two base. But this counterattack is going to be absolutely devastating. Just devastating here. I mean, can, can Heffernan do this? Can he control both of these players well enough? To hold it off. I'm not I'm not putting I'm putting it past him. I was gonna say I'm not putting it past him, but there are enough lings out. There are just not enough. 18 lings in production, right? But 18 doesn't seem like enough. This is a lot of stalkers, good marines, good, just a continuous trickle of marines and stalkers. That was a close lightning strike, man. Ling's trying to do this thing, and I mean, if I could get a marine dead count on this, I would love it. Because the Terran players lost so much stuff. The Stalkers have? No, the Stalkers don't have any upgrades. Doesn't really matter. I mean, continuing to make Lings to defend here. Speedlings, Speedlings, Speedlings. And more to them Speedlings. Queen dies here. And that's just going to hurt additional attempts to build more Speedlings because Larva production is going to be down. This move. Jeez. The Marine player. <laughs> he's just... He's doing his best. He's meat shielding it. He's protecting his Protoss friend. These Stalkers have been allowed to get 19 kills. 19 kills on the one, and Heffernan is out. Bits, please, and Foxhound are your victors. Yeah, resources lost here. Definitely, Bits, please, the most. 3,000. He lost 60 total units. And I think that's all Marines. Maybe uh, an SCV or two, but... 60 total Marines lost. Ay caramba. Ay caramba. Meanwhile, Heffernan lost 2,300 resources himself. 59 units. That's going to be all Zerglings. And some drones and stuff too, but gee, Willikers. Good one. Good 3v3. All right. So that's going to bring this cheese compilation to a close. Wow. That was a lot. That was a lot of cheese. One of my longer compilations. So. All right. So that's going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin with yet another daily Legacy of the Void upload. Another cheese compilation. Go ahead. And hit that like button if you like what you saw and what you heard today. Hit that subscribe for daily Legacy of the Void content. You can also find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon, as previously mentioned, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. I really do mean it, you guys. And you take care of yourself.